Welcome to part four of the North Pole video series designed to help you experience truly extraordinary and unforgettable moments. In this video, we'll review the answers to your frequently asked questions regarding this voyage. In our next and final section, we're going to go over some frequently asked questions that have come up with passengers regarding this expedition. Sometimes when potential passengers have had a look at the North Pole itinerary, one of the most common statements that have come up in conversation are something along these lines. 10 sea days? That seems like a lot. If you've been on cruises before, you may associate sea days with rougher water and less excitement than days involving shore landings, but ice days on board our Russian nuclear icebreaker are altogether different. We call them ice days because it's much more likely that the ship will be crushing ice rather than encountering rough seas. Not only is ice much more stable and less choppy, but it is a truly unique thing to experience an icebreaker breaking ice that is several meters thick. On ice days, nothing compares to the power and performance of the ship, except perhaps that of a space shuttle. If you can imagine, from the deck you can watch this conveyor belt of ice moving towards you as you approach your destination, and it's nothing short of mesmerizing. And for those who are especially interested in the engineering side of things, they can visit the engine room and gain some insight into understanding the mechanics of the ship. Overall, the ice and the ship will be unlike anything you've ever seen before, and the furthest thing from boring. While reaching the North Pole itself will be a bucket list item for many of you, you may also be wondering how to occupy your time on the ship en route and on the way back from the destination. Aside from enjoying the icebreaker experience, there are many more things to see and do on the ship. We've gone over many of these points already, but here's a quick recap for you. As for outdoor activities, there's often wildlife to spot and photograph from the deck and an overwhelmingly beautiful white landscape to enjoy. And on the way back from the North Pole, we will try to stop at Franz Josef Land, an archipelago that belongs to Russia, for some hiking and zodiac cruising. For those who want to keep active, there's a gym, basketball and volleyball courts, and ping pong tables on the ship. For those who are keen on polar learning, there's an onboard library to explore, plus our expedition leaders and other onboard experts will run a lecture series. Also, there's an onboard polar boutique to pick up souvenirs or extra layers. To help you relax and unwind, there are two saunas and a small heated saltwater plunge pool. Not to mention a bunch of social receptions that will take place throughout the journey. We've talked about the Russian icebreaker and what the journey is like once you step on the ship, but you may also be wondering about gateway cities and points of embarkation. Your journey begins in Finland's capital, Helsinki, on the Gulf of Finland and just south of the Arctic Circle. You'll enjoy a one-night included hotel stay. You'll meet an expedition team member as well as some of your fellow passengers. You'll take part in a pre-expedition briefing, and depending on when you arrive, you may have free time to take in the city's historic sites, restaurants, and incredible architecture. From Helsinki, you'll take a comfortable charter flight to the Russian port city of Murmansk. From here, you'll board 50 years of victory in Russia's extreme northwest and sail out of Kola Bay right into the Barents Sea. Temperatures at the North Pole in July can range from minus 10 to plus 10 degrees Celsius, 14 to 50 degrees Fahrenheit so it's best to come prepared for anything, with lots of layers. Russian visas are required to travel to the North Pole, and passengers are responsible for applying for their own. Depending on your nationality, the application process will be a little bit different. You'll have to investigate with a Russian consulate or embassy in your respective countries. After booking, Cork will assist in sending a letter of invitation to you. Instructions for applying for your visa will accompany the letter. Here's the process you can expect. Number one, send passport copy to Quark. Number two, receive letter of invitation from Quark. Number three, file Russian visa application, then apply for visa. Number four, receive visa. Number five, fill out the border permit. Number six, send the border permit and copy of obtained Russian visa to Quark. This can take a while, so be sure to start three to four months before traveling. Upon booking, we'll share the details again. The expedition team who will be leading your voyage is global so there are usually a wide variety of staff from different places who speak different languages. However, we are able to offer the North Pole Expedition in two official languages, English and Mandarin. Our language program ensures that we provide two types of services, guides and lecturers who speak Mandarin, and linguists who can provide consecutive translation or simultaneous interpretation. This means that our travelers can have the most immersive and educational experience possible, even if English is not their first language. To give you an overview of how this works, we will deliver all safety information, briefings, announcements, 
a selection of educational presentations and notice board materials in English and Mandarin. During Zodiac excursions, the expedition leader will coordinate the non-English speaking guests to travel with a guide able to interpret in other languages when possible. In lectures, the non-English groups wear transmitters so they can hear a native language translation in their ear. While the expedition team is multilingual, the captain and the onboard crew is Russian. They're actually the same crew that stays aboard during the year to perform other icebreaking duties. As far as age limitations, on the low end we can host passengers as young as eight, and there's no limitation on the high end. As far as accessibility limitations, you should be advised that dining room, lecture facilities, and the bar are all on different levels of the ship, and that the elevator is turned off when at sea. Also, the gangway is quite long and steep. Overall, we recommend that passengers should be comfortable navigating stairs several times a day. Our Polar Travel Advisors are always here to support you, whether you have specific questions on itineraries or would like to learn more about the North Pole. We've all been to the polar regions and we are extremely passionate about them and can provide tips and advice. Additionally, our website is a great resource to understand the North Pole itineraries we talked about today. We also have a North Pole brochure and destination guide that you can download as a reference to some of the information we've covered. You should also check out our blog, where you'll find great stories, photos, videos, and interviews with past passengers who have traveled with us to the North Pole. We also have some brand new virtual reality videos that will help you get a real flavor for the voyage. These resources are all accessible from our homepage if you head to our website and hit the resources button in the header. Congratulations! This concludes our video series. I hope you are even more excited to journey to the top of the world.